What's happening, fellas? Today is the day. It's Manic Moto Monday here at Kaplan Cycles. You saw the teaser video on this 92 WR500 super rare works replica Yamaha 500. Same exact frame and engine cases that Damon Bradshaw won an AMA National on in 1992. This is a super rare piece. I'm going to give it a little demo ride here for you, so stay tuned. This, my good fellows, is not your grandpa's YZ490. This is an extremely rare WR500. Like I said, they only made a thousand of them. Most of them are ridden into the ground, off-road, or on the motocross tracks. Super special piece. Those that know, know, and that those that don't, stay tuned. I'll tell you all about it. Yamaha had not done much to the YZ490 since it was introduced in the 82 and they were getting their ass kicked by Yamaha, excuse me, by Kawasaki and Honda and KTM and, and the rest of them in the big bore market. So they wanted to produce a bike for Damon that was worthy of racing the AMA Nationals. So they took their 1992 YZ250 frame and it didn't require much. This motor pretty much slipped right in. They just had to change the front motor mounts and a couple other small modifications. They also kicked out the steering stem one degree so it would be a little bit more stable because this is much faster. This thing's an absolute freaking rocket ship. Uh, so the 92, this frame took the clunky old YZ490 style and bought it into the 90s. And even by, even by today's standard, it's an absolutely stunning piece. This bike basically glows. The Some of the mods on the 92 that were specific to this year, it was the first year of the Yamaha with a removable subframe. So it, it bought the ability to pull the whole ass end of the bike off of it for servicing. And it bought much sharper handling to the YZ490 motor. Now this motor, if you bore the second over, it, it's actually 510 cc's. This one's a stock original bore. They didn't use the YZ250 front forks. Kayaba made a special set of forks that was very similar to the award-winning KX250 forks of that year so they're much better forks and it has a different shock but the frame is the same the, all the plastics on the bike is the same as the yz250 except for the gas tank the one with a larger gas tank because obviously the 500 was uh, sucking more fuel now this is an extremely rare original survivor it has the original rims the original kickstand is still intact uh, the frame rails are in mint condition the engine cases and cylinder the motor is all original it's got very low hours on it and it's just been given a full what we'll call a preservation service here at Kaplan Cycles. The um, One of the other big benefits the YZ chassis bought is the Yamaha always had the crummy rear brake. It had a drum rear brake. So this the, that's the first thing I noticed when I went ripping down the driveway is how good the brakes are. The, the rear brake is light years better than any drum brake they ever had on the YZs. And the front brake is on point. It's on point with even today's modern motocross bikes. The brakes are excellent and the suspension is excellent also. And the frame, steel frame is, is uh, in mint condition. Just a kick-ass piece. Uh, the front, starting at the front of the bike, it has a brand new Dunlop front tire on it. It's got new fork protectors. It's got a new front fender, new front number plate, brand new set of Renthal bars, new set of Ori grips. It's got new levers on here. The uh, brake fluid has been flushed and filled. The gas tank was cleaned inside and the outside of it was yellow tarnished because of the gas that had been in it for decades so uh the, the gas tank was sanded it was coswell sealed on the inside and the exterior was painted base coat with clear coat and new graphics on there uh those are steiger graphics made by my girlfriend chrissy steiger you won't find another set exactly like it. it's original yamaha colors replica scheme to the yamaha with the addition of a factory style number plate graphic on there it's got a brand new seat cover uh the frame's been repainted in our detail shop, 
uh, Ronnie uh, actually did the, the restoration on the spike, the cosmetic restoration, and the wizard did all the mechanical stuff. You can see the original sticker is still on the shock. This saw is the original Delta Box swing arm sticker on the swing arm, which is pretty remarkable. Um, very hard to find one like this. It's even got the tire sticker on this side here, which is one of the first things that blows off. And most guys that race these would immediately take that that kickstand off you can't it wasn't even legal to race these in uh, new england with a kickstand you had to take them off they're all the original cycle parts are in mint condition the rims the um the foot pegs the the shifter the stuff that normally is destroyed in short order is all intact this thing just this is a survivor guys it just never was was uh ridden into the ground the original shock spring in color uh in paint is still on the shock spring which is absolutely remarkable for a bike of this vintage Junior, you want to add anything about this kick-ass piece? Yeah, this year's revision, um, at least at today's date, this is a bike that you can take and race against modern bikes and not be totally outclassed. The brake upgrades and then the tighter steel frame chassis. Uh, you know, you can bring it to Dilla and hit every jump on the track and uh, do it safely as a thoroughly modern motorcycle. And you got to love the air-cooled simplicity. There's very few moving parts on the bike, no... Uh, liquid cooling radiators i'd imagine it'd be pretty light if you put it on the scale compared to a cr500 yeah no doubt it's uh it, it, one of the things about the air cooled engine is it's super easy to service there's no liquid cooling water pumps anything to, to worry about probably the the most easy to work on big bore modern framed big bore right, ever made top end in 20 minutes yeah it, i mean an average high school kid could rebuild the top end on this thing it's that simple with with uh you know a, a, a simple set of metric tools if Yamaha today produced an air-cooled 500 and wedged it in their brand new chassis, 4G chassis, they would sell like absolute hotcakes. There's no doubt in my mind if they priced one affordably. Some of the other changes they made to this bike now, the, they called it the Ping King, the air-cooled YZ, um, or the air, they called the Air Hammer, the Ping King. Had a couple nicknames because they were prone to detonating. Yamaha fixed all that with a, a new port timing and new... Um, so uh, a slightly lower compression ratio, and they redesigned the pipe and the porting for a strong mid-range. This thing flat out hauls a mill. I've also been told it has a built-in lighting cool coil if you wanted to add a lighting kit for it. So again, only a thousand made. Damon Bradshaw, Doug Dubeck kicked ass on these on the national circuit. It was definitely competitive, and uh, this is a beautiful piece. We've gone right through the bike. It's got uh, 150 psi compression. It's got a new spark plug. The carb was completely rebuilt and serviced. The new float, a new float needle seat and gasket. New fuel lines and vent lines. The fuel tank was flushed, inspected, cleaned, caswell sealed, repainted, base coat, clear coat with new graphics. It has a new fuel pet cock. The air box was cleaned and uh, serviced. It has a brand new twin air filter. We're running VP fuel mixed 32 to 1 with Bell Ray. New, new Maxima gear oil. Brand new rear Dunlop 952 and a front Dunlop 952. New heavy duty rear tire tube and new front tube. It's got a new Renthal 50 tooth rear sprocket with a new JT Racing 15 tooth front sprocket and a brand new top of the line Pro Taper gold chain, which just looks beautiful. The bike, the people that have commented on the bike on the previous video, uh, that the video kind of took off and they got like 20,000 views pretty much over the course of this weekend. I was just really excited when they bought it up and just did a quick uh, cell phone video uh, that won't be nearly uh, as nice as this edited video that Kenny will do with the pictures in it and everything, but it we had the phones been ringing off the hook. There all kinds of people have called and made offers. We've decided we're going to list this one on eBay. Uh, it'll have a reasonable reserve, and the high bidder wins it. If you're from the UK or wherever, we can ship this bike anywhere worldwide. I hope it stays in the United States because there weren't that many of them to begin with. Hopefully, one of our clients in uh, the U.S. will buy the bike. Uh, you know, I like I like to keep them here when we can, but seems like they're popular worldwide anyway so again the brakes were serviced front and rear flushed and bled with new brake fluid the silencer was repacked the pipe was polished it has the new rc high bend handlebars um i mentioned grip, grips and levers also a brand new full front fender uh rear fender and front and rear number plate plastic package the air duct on on the air foil on, on the engine cylinder head is that the original one kyle uh yes it is yep i've been told that those are somewhat on the edge of unobtainium is that true yeah as far as my knowledge no one makes a reproduction one and the oem ones are very hard to come by that may be one of the more valuable pieces on the bike um 
to find. But just to find one like this, it's got all the original stickers, the original kickstand, the original rims, the original um, uh, cycle parts is, is pretty much uh, un unheard of. And highly collectible, one of the nicest looking bikes from that era for sure. It's definitely a investment quality classic big bore two stroke. These are, these, these guys, these are the big block Corvettes of the future. These are the big block Chevelles, you know, that you see what those muscle car prices have gone absolutely insane through the roof, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars sometimes for the, the right Hemi cars. I doubt these will ever be in the millions of dollars ranges, but they're, they're gonna be going up in value, especially with such a low production number yeah, well, for a bike like this. gas engines get phased out and no more two strokes are being produced? This will be like this is it gold, unobtainium gold. Again, the graphics are by Christy Steiger, limited edition Steiger graphics kit. These are not for sale to the public at this point. Maybe someday they will be, but they're not. Um, bike runs absolutely amazing. The brakes are off the hook. It doesn't vibrate excessively. Everything is exactly like you'd expect it to be, fresh out of the box in 1992. It's been fully detailed. Ronnie spent uh, a full week on this bike in the detail shop going over. I guess he had about two hours a day for seven days, right? 14 hours roughly you'd put into it. So um, he did a beautiful job on the, on the detailing of the bike. It's it's just stunning. I'll have some information about the, four, the WR that we've gotten off the internet also included on the eBay ad. Uh, you wanna find the eBay link, just click on the About Us on the, go into our YouTube are you watching this no, YouTube just video? the first link at the top of the description. There will be a link to the, the for sale bikes. Okay, so. or, or in the, it's in the About Us, too. So either way, you'll find it. So if you have any questions, give us a call, 860-454-7024. Uh, bid high, bid often, because this is the only one in the world that I know of today that, that's for sale this nice. And there are only a 1,000 of them originally produced. How many of them are still in this kind of shape? Well, certainly less than 10% of them survived in this kind of condition. So um, there's probably maybe a dozen of them in the United States this nice. Who knows? I don't know exactly, but we've only had one other one. We've had dozens, dozens of CR500s and KX500s, maybe hundreds at this point come through. We've had as many as when A.J. Wagoner came here earlier this year, we had 51. We, we actually, Kyle did an inventory. We had 51 big bore two strokes. Yep vintage two strokes in our inventory. Now, most of them are KXs. We have a couple, we've had some Makos. We've had more Makos, Sand Spider 490s, than we had WR 500s. It's just a really rare piece. And uh, the bike is, uh, runs and rides as good as it looks. So if you want the ultimate Christmas present, put this bad boy under the tree. I would say go for it. It's, it's definitely a kick-ass piece. Captain America approved. The, um, Frame rails, I always recommend checking the frame rails. The frame rails on this bike are uh, nothing short of pristine. There's not a single ding on this side that my hand can feel. Yeah, we'll put the photos of, of the underside in the gallery. Yep. So. Yeah, check out the pictures. She's a beaut. You won't find a nicer one. Any closing statements from you guys? Yeah. One thing to uh, touch on, um, like Ken mentioned, Chrissy did design the graphics on these, which the importance of that is uh, most companies that replicate these graphics don't get the colors right. Um, this blue is a very hard color to match. And uh, I actually purchased a set of graphics for this that came back to us um, almost a green color. So instead of blue, it was kind of green, which would have thrown the whole bike off and definitely not made it as appealing as it is. So when Christy, you know, was able to match this blue very nicely, it... Uh, that's pretty much what saves the bikes, you know. It's it's all about the appearance, the cosmetic, you know, the attraction to it, and um, you know, it's it's hard to find people that can make that color match that that well. Christy has a home office where she does all the graphics out of, and she has a color chart that's like three feet by four feet, two of them, where she can match the colors. She's been doing graphics for 30 years. This is not somebody who just got started. She's an absolute pro, and that shows in the in the finished product of all her graphics kits. The um seat cover uh, i heard these are really hard to get too yeah i it took me a couple tries to get the right colored seat cover as well most people just sell them with the normal um blue that you would find on a yz um but i was actually able to find a company that sold this light blue that uh yeah it took me a couple tries and it's it's not it's not easy to find that's for sure every time first kick for me and listen to the idle on this
going to be cheap, but it's going to be worth it. This is one kick-ass piece. Good enough, I don't got it. 